In this household today, we're giving food, but we have also received food. Howdy folks, I'm Martha. We'll be doing some kitchen action today. Dorothy's editing the video, but she's also involved in the kitchen action. It may be behind the scenes, but she's involved. This is the first one I'm doing to the roast is getting it out. With the Hurricane Helene that came through, our power came on last Friday evening. This is Friday the following week, and there's still some in the area that don't have power. So some of the community that has power are going together to prepare meals for those with no power or those who are just getting back on their feet. So we are going to be making a roast beef and gravy over rice and peas and carrots for tomorrow's evening's meal to contribute toward it. And we did the roast today and then tomorrow we'll complete the roast beef and gravy combo with the rice and the peas. This takes us back memory lane to the meal mom had years and years and years for Sunday lunch. That was roast beef, gravy, and fried potatoes. So I hopped to it real quick and I cooked some potatoes. So our meal tonight is going to be roast beef and gravy, fried potatoes, and peas. So we're going to take the lid off of this. All right, I have to be careful to not burn my fingers or my thumb. Yes, we had it tucked around here tight. I wish you could smell what I smell, even though we don't see it yet. All right, I'm going to pick it up so you get to see first. Oh, my goodness. We have a strainer here. We're going to put the broth through. To start out with, I'm just going to dip some out, and then I can pour it out. But I do not want to have a hot mess all over the countertop. We'll see how it goes here. It does not have to be down to the last drop right now. So we're good. Now to help keep the roast hot, I'm going to put the foil back over this. Put some of this broth in the little kettle here for gravy for supper tonight. Then what we do tomorrow will be fresh gravy. Okay. Before I peel potatoes to rice, we'll run the clip of getting them off the stove and getting them in the kettle, in the pan here. Okay, here are the potatoes, and here's my thin prong fork. I'm going to stick a potato. Yes, it goes in very easy. Come on, let it go, let it go. Alrighty, so the potatoes are done. I need to get the potatoes out of the water. Dorothy prefers to pull each potato out of the water and into a pan. I prefer to drain some of the water off first. If you drain it, you need to be very careful you don't steam yourself because wherever the lid is tipped back, steam will come out, so be careful. So whether you pull each potato out of the water or pour the water off, the end result is the same and they are out of the water and cooling in a pan. We put paper towel covering the bottom of a cake pan using the prong to get the potatoes out, and I like to sit them end for end. A couple of the potatoes had bad spots, so I cut it off and still cook them. We usually let the potatoes cool off before putting them in the refrigerator. However, they are easier to rice if they are cold, and we're having fried potatoes for supper. So I put a few in the refrigerator sooner than normal so we could have cold potatoes to rice for supper. Since it's a small amount, I'm using our little hand ricer instead of getting the king cutter out that we have. We 
want to give a hearty welcome to our new subscribers. We love it when you leave comments letting us know you're a new subscriber. So we hope you enjoy your journey with us and the videos and content we share. Thanks to everyone who likes and comments on our videos and also shares it on your social media that helps our channel to grow. And if this is your first time with us, we hope you consider subscribing. And now back to the potatoes. The person who's heading this up um, on Facebook put a posting on the community page saying what's going on. And the evening meal that's being provided is all done on a volunteer basis. It's getting a little bit packed in there, so I will dump it out. I'll probably actually put some of this in a bag. It won't take it all for supper tonight. And have it with omelets in the morning or something to do with eggs in the morning. I saw something last night I didn't think I'd ever have the opportunity to see. Because Dorothy and I are both pretty much at home anymore. We do... We don't do traveling as such anymore. And that was to see the northern lights. I forget how long of a stretch here that was supposed to be able to see the northern lights. And I saw, when I went outside, I saw just a little bit of a pink glow, but... Uh, and then look what my phone picked up. I was shocked and amazed. It was beautiful. And I have a little clip of it. I'll have to show the uh, northern lights that we saw from our front yard here. I am on the stove side now, and we need to get some things. We need to get the potatoes going, the peas going, and the gravy going. So I'm going to turn the burner on under the skillet. I'll get this going, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the rest of the peas. And to the peas, we add salt. And then butter and margarine of your choice. There we go. We recently did the Olive Garden salad. And I prefer just a good tossed salad, but I like peas in them. So I don't cook my peas for that. I just... I'll put them in here. Let them thaw out, then put them in a bag in the refrigerator. And it's ready to go when I do my tossed salad. I'll add peas to it, and I got a yummy salad. Add a little salt to the gravy. And that's supposed to keep it from boiling over. We use a vegetable oil for fried potatoes. Make sure the skillet is completely coated. Some salt on the potatoes. That should be more than enough for supper, so I'm gonna put the rest of the potatoes in a bag and then tuck them away in the refrigerator. And like I said, we can use them for eggs and potatoes or whatever we want to use them for. We do beanie weenies and fried potatoes sometimes. In fact, we have a video on that making beanie weenies and fried potatoes. That's a good combo, believe it or not. A little spoon here to help guide it in. These are ready for the refrigerator and now I need to make a thickening for the gravy. And I'll be using cornstarch for the thickening and I discovered I like using a measuring cup because it gives you a spout though when you pour it in. I 
Normally the cornstarch dissolves fairly easy. And I'll probably add just a little bit of thickening to the peas as well and I can use the same thing here. No worries about the beef broth boiling over because I forgot to turn the burner on. Now I'll turn the burner on and we've got to watch out for it. If you make a thickening ahead of time and it sits before you actually use it, you always want to stir it because it has a way of settling. Return the potatoes. <laughs> I was going to turn them a few minutes before. We like this crusty stuff, okay? So it's not going to go wasted. But I was going to turn it a few minutes before, and the phone rang, and they left a very lengthy message on the answering machine. So I didn't want to get all that racket in while we were flipping the potatoes. I am ready to stir the peas and get one or two out to check them to see if they are ready to go. I have learned my lesson to let it cool down because it just came out of the pot. All right, this is the same thickening that I have together for the gravy. I'm just going to put a little bit to the peas. It won't take much. Peas are good without it, but it just helps them hang together better. If you don't have it to it, then they want to go rolling everywhere. All right, that's all it takes. Turn the burner off, put the lid on, and slide it off of the burner. I don't want it to burn. I'm going to turn the potatoes off, so we are waiting on the gravy. Turn the burner up. Using the hand grinder, the potatoes want to kind of more stick together. And using the hand crank that we have, ricing the potatoes, and it's more of a separation of each little potato. But anyway, either way is yummy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add the thickening. Making a mess, Martha, working backwards. Get it up right away so it doesn't stick on the stove. Now bring it back up to a boil. And it's boiling. I have the roast beef on the plate. We will add potatoes. And the peas. And gravy over the meat and potatoes. And there we have a yummy, yummy supper just waiting for us. And now a little glimpse of the food we made to go. We had a bit of a time crunch, but we made it on time. English peas are on the stove. Dorothy's making the gravy and Martha's peeling carrots. Here's a crock pot with the roast beef and gravy. Peas and carrots are in a kettle on the stove, ready to go. And we're transferring the rice to a different kettle. And Martha's just about ready to head out the door. As we said before, others were also bringing in food, and we had cornbread and fruit cups to add to these plates. Well, folks, we had some exciting happen. In this household today, we're giving food, but we have also received food. Our neighbor texted us and said that Junkyard Barbecue is sponsoring some hamburgers today, and they want to bring us three burgers. So, we're going to unbag this together and see what it is. All right, this one's having a hard time standing up, so we will start out with this one. Barbecue potato chips, a napkin, 
brownie, a brownie, and a brownie. Dump it all out. Here we have this three waters. We have mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise. And what is in here? Oh, tomato, lettuce, and cheese for the burger. Nice looking burger. That's nice to do the cheese, tomatoes, and lettuce separate. How awesome is this? Chips, brownies, condiments, hamburgers, lettuce, tomato, and cheese for the hamburgers. So here we have the food that was brought to us. We appreciate it very, very much, and I know we'll enjoy it. And yes, these hamburgers were delicious. And now for the golden thought. I welcome you to the golden thought of this episode. We thought with the northern lights we saw, there was one song that came to my mind. This song just wraps up why our God is such an awesome God. Four verses in the chorus. I'll read the chorus after the first and last verse. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountains grander, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. When I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. This is a power-packed song. How great thou art, how great thou art. I went to YouTube to see who I could recommend. If you'd like to go, pull up the song and listen to it being sung. And BYU Noteworthy. They do a beautiful job of singing this song and showing some scenery, mountain scenes in the background. So yes, O oh Lord my God, how great Thou art. We thank you for joining us for this episode. We hope you've been blessed, encouraged, and inspired. And until next time, God bless.